With ambitious talk of vaccines and normal life around the corner, many are hoping the city's lucrative convention business will be back in full swing and maybe by the summer. Illinois' once vibrant tourism industry brought in $43 billion in 2019, around $3.5 billion getting passed on to state and local governments. Half a million people were employed by various hospitality jobs, restaurants, hotels, conventions, museums. And now Governor J.B. Pritzker's administration says, barring a major shift in current COVID trends, McCormick Place could be the home of the auto show once again by July. My next guest is the chair of the state legislature's new tourism and hospitality committee, and her sixth district covers much of Chicago's north side and lakefront. State Senator Sarah Feigenholz joining us this morning. Senator Senator, appreciate your time. Thank you. It's great to see you, Paul. Thanks for having me. Sure. So we're going to talk about all that convention stuff, but before we get there, I want to stay in the world of other COVID relief. Seven and a half billion dollars in federal aid on its way uh, from the feds to assist the state. Um, and there are some restrictions on it. You can't put it in the pension funds and all of that. But what do you say to the skeptical Illinoisan who says, ah, you see the legislature, they're not going to put it where they should. They're going to put it to various pet projects that some of them have and we'll never know. You know, I, I think that the feds are a little smarter than that than just handing us a blank check. But, you know, we have to keep in mind that we're still in the midst of a very broad vaccine campaign that we must pay for. Um, and that, that has a pretty hefty price tag. Um, a, a lot of other uh, spending that we've done around community health to our federally qualified health centers, our hospitals. Most of this money is going to our health care providers. None of it is going to pay the pension. Uh, okay, fair enough. So you wrote an op-ed, which is what caught my attention in Cranes this week, about the importance of bringing conventions back. I mentioned in the lead-in to you the amount of money, $43 billion in economic activity back in 2019. Um, first of all, for bringing it back this summer, Aren't we already behind the eight ball? Eight ball. You write about other states, uh, Michigan, Ohio. They're already got plans underway. Where do we stand, and how can we really bring them back in 2021? Well, I wouldn't say we're behind the eight ball. I think that we're, um, you know, there has there's been some um, signaling and telegraphing that we're about to open. I know today there were uh, significant meetings between the stakeholders and, and DCEO about putting a plan together. Uh, I think that, you know, we're going to see how our numbers are. They're pretty good. And our distribution of vaccine is moving along. Um, so if we continue on that path with no variants invading uh, or changing um, sort of the trajectory that we're on, you know, we have to keep in mind that, you know, restaurants can typically open a lot more quickly. But hotels and conventions need a great deal of planning. They need that ramp. And so I yeah. think Chicago is ready to dial it up. Um, we have lost a significant amount of tourism. Um, also, you know, in this package that you were talking about that's coming to the state, there's a lot of money going to transportation, to schools, but also to the restaurant industry, which was completely shut down, and the bar and bars. Yeah. Um, I believe there's $28.8 billion in the federal package for bars and restaurants. Yeah, and they, they, really, they really have been hurting. Let me ask you about the psychological impact of all this, because while there are a lot of people who want to dive in and get back to conventions and do all this or have our summer affairs, and, and Mayor Lightfoot have said, you know, it, it hopefully will be a better summer than uh, more like 2019 than 2020. But isn't there the other side of the psychological impact, which is the fear that if we go too quickly, we have another surge. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, when I talked about other locations in the op-ed, Paul, yeah. that I was referring specifically to um, Ohio, New York, Connecticut, and they're dialing up from 50 to 100 or 150. You know, we're also looking at um, a footprint at McCormick Place like none other, where you have a room that can hold 100,000 people, and 20% of that is still a significant number of people. So very high ceilings, great ventilation. We're very fortunate and lucky to have McCormick Place, and it is the, the nucleus of conventions in Chicago. So... Um, yeah, I do think there's a psychological uh, component to this, and I'm glad you brought that up. I think that, um, 
I think we need to look forward. We can, we can do that simultaneously. We can respect the yeah. science, be mindful of the science, and at the same time, plan ahead for events that are six months down the road. Well, and, and, and that's just to kind of put a button on this. You do, you write about the fact that the, you need six months. You don't just show up at McCormick Place and say we're going to do a convention next week. So we're almost already beyond the summer in terms of any event. So is it your plan to say we're really looking at fall and, and even the winter time? I think I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to be. I'm very interested at what uh, Deputy Governor Hines said about the auto show. I think we have other uh, smaller events coming in in August. You know, some of them are mega shows. Some of them are are significantly smaller. I don't have the specifics on those. I'm sure there are a lot of conversations happening right now, and I think shortly we're going to have a list of of who will be coming in. I know that August we have the National Conference of State Legislatures coming to Chicago. Mm. We are hosting it this year. It is certainly not as big as the auto show. And so I'm hoping that we begin small and we get bigger. But you know, this is going to put 10,000 people from the city of Chicago just for everything going on at McCormick Place back to work. And that is really important when you consider you know, this is an industry that has about 600,000 jobs, all told, right? And they are all, 120,000 of those people are, are not working. And we really need to get them back to McCormick Place and back to work safely, carefully, slowly with mitigation. And I think, I think these conventions are going to look very different, but we need to get to work. Uh, all right, very quickly, only about a half a minute left, but just very quickly, new chair of the Illinois Democratic Party, Congresswoman Robin Kelly, new chair, new speaker of the House. I know you're not in the House anymore, but uh, do you have a quick thought as to what the Democratic Party looks like going forward with all the new leadership? It's very exciting. I, I am blessed to be here to watch this change. Uh, it, it, this is a very special moment. I uh, have known Robin Kelly since she first came to the General Assembly. She was my seatmate and a Yankee fan, a uh, big Derek Jeter fan. And she is an, an incredible, uh, com she, she's got all the qualities that we need to lead this party. Uh, with a, she's a fresh face, she's inclusive, and collaborative, right. and I'm excited to see her move All the right. party forward. She was on the show recently. I forgot to bring up the Yankees. Oh, well. Uh, and I know Republicans want to continue to have a strong voice in the legislature, so hopefully they'll get that as well. State Senator Sarah Feigenholz, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Let's get some conventions on the board. That'd be great. Let's do it and, and play ball. All right. Yes, that'd be good too. All right.